This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk about a problem that I know that every editor and especially every producer has run into and that's where you have a shot that you really love but there's just something maybe that's happening in the shot that you don't like that you'd like to remove. In this lesson, we're going to use an effect from Boris Continuum Complete, the remover effect, and we're going to use it in conjunction, and this has got me very excited, with the integrated Mocha tracking to remove some elements. Now, the question is, what are we going to be removing? Well, if I take a look at our first shot here in this shot, we're going to remove this sailboat from the shot. And you'll notice we got a little bit of a camera shake happening here, which makes this a little bit difficult than just using the standard remover effect. Then what we're going to do is in our next shot, I'm going to remove one of these signs from the fence over here. We'll just remove this no diving allowed sign. And we're going to make it look like that sign was never there to begin with. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer but sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there, and we have our first shot, which is the shot of our boat here. And let's get in and let's make the change to this shot that we want to do. Let's remove this boat from our shot to make this a clean plate. I'm going to come to the effects palette and we're going to make sure that we type in remover. Now, if we needed to find it the old fashioned way, we could simply navigate to the BCC image restoration category and we'd find remover located in alphabetical order. Okay, I'm going to take the remover effect and I'm going to drag and drop. Now, as soon as I let go of the effect, something very interesting happens. It almost appears as though a little sun or a little moon has appeared in the cloud. Now, this is the default behavior for remover. What remover's default behavior is that it assumes that you're going to do a static remove, meaning that the shot that you're going to apply remover to is static. It doesn't move. So you'll see now that if I drag through, what we basically have is the destination point, the part that we want to cover up. Let's say, for example, down here, if we wanted to remove that cloud, and then we have the source point. Now, obviously, putting the source point way over there is kind of pointless because it doesn't give us the look we want. But where this starts to really play out is if I was to come down to about here, and I'm just going to soften this up just a little bit here, kind of like that. And this is a good way, now obviously I put this together in two seconds, to give you an idea of how the static remover would work. Now I'd get in and be a little bit more precise, adjust the position everything. But for us, that doesn't help us because you'll see that the shot moves. And you can see that clear as day that this point doesn't work because it just sits there and it doesn't adapt with the shot. Well, this is where Mocha is going to come in and really save the day. I'm just going to remove the effect and just start again right from scratch. And what we need to now do is to apply or to tell the effect that we want to utilize Mocha because I, you know, you always hear me talk about how inside of many of the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete, we have the pixel chooser of which the integrated Mocha tracking is part of that. The only problem is, is that at first glance, it's not part of this effect. Well, it's not that it's not part of the effect. It's just that it's not part of this remove method, the clone spot. That is for a static shot. I want to use a clone shape. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm immediately told, hey, please enable the pixel chooser and select shape mat. Now, you'll also notice down here that if I twirl up geometrics, there is the pixel chooser now ready to go. Okay. Now, before we get in and actually do some tracking inside of Mocha, we're going to need to make sure that the quality of our timeline is set to full. And let's turn on the pixel chooser for Mocha specifically. And let's launch Mocha right here. Now, as soon as I launch Mocha, you'll notice that almost immediately the interface pops up and my shot now appears. What's important to keep in mind again 
is that this is actually a reference shot from my timeline, sort of like a QuickTime reference. So everything that we're doing in here is with a reference file, okay? So let's get in and let's do this. Now I'm gonna do this as a two-step process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the track first. And once I do the track, then we're going to select the area that we want to mask out. So let's do that first. Now I think what I'm gonna do is for the track, I'm gonna use one of these clouds here. I'm just gonna choose the X-Blind tool. We're just gonna draw a very rough shape around this cloud here. And I'm going to also make sure that my minimum pixels used is set somewhere around 40%. Now what's important to keep in mind, the higher that value, the longer your tracks are gonna take, but then again, the more precise they are going to be. Now I'm also going to disable shear. Now I didn't make it all the way back to the beginning. I'm actually one frame in, that's okay. What we're gonna do is track back one frame and then we'll track forward. We can do that by utilizing the track one frame previous, or I can just hit track backwards and I'll just do that because basically once it gets to the beginning, it's done, okay? Now we're just gonna track forward, okay? Now you'll see that, you know, there's not much adjustment that needs to be done with this track. You'll see this track is pretty darn locked on right from the start, okay? Now many people might get in and try to track the boat. For me, the boat is moving, so I don't wanna get in and track that. What I wanna do is track the background because when we remove this boat, it's really the background that we're going to be dealing with. Now, once I've done that, I can turn on my planar surface so that you can actually see how this track went. I'll just hit the space bar here. That's pretty darn locked on, okay? So let's get in now and let's add the mask that we're going to use to cover up our boat. Now I'm gonna turn off this layer, but before I do that, I'm gonna call this track reference, okay? And let's just turn this layer off, okay? We're gonna turn our planar surface off as well here. Let's just zoom back. And what we're now going to do is to define the area that we want to use as the mask, okay? What I'm gonna do is grab the X-Spline tool. Now I'm not gonna use a standard shape like a, you know, a circle or a rectangle. I'm just gonna kind of create my own shape. Now I don't wanna to vary too far away from the boat. So we'll come to about here. I think that's pretty good. I think these come in a little bit too close. So let's just adjust those. And I just wanna get a little bit more water in this shot here. There we go, perfect, okay? Now the other thing we wanna make sure of is that this boat is not going to leave the area of the mask, okay? So we're gonna put it back to about here. Okay, I think that's pretty darn good right there. Keeps our boat covered at all times. Very nice. So now that we've defined the area that we're going to remove, we need to make sure that our mask is going to move with that background because when we take a different portion of the shot and slide it into place, we need to make sure that everything lines up and moves the way that it should. So what I wanna do now is I wanna navigate up here. Now I'm actually gonna call this layer mask slash math, okay? And I wanna make sure that with this layer, we're gonna link this to the track reference layer. Now, as soon as I do that and I hit the space bar, you'll now see that this layer not only adjusts itself as the boat's moving through it, but it's also now locked into the background. So this is exactly what we're going to want. So let's get in, let's make our adjustment. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to close Mocha, Mocha BCC, we'll say save. Now, as soon as it saves, you'll notice that our message has disappeared, but nothing has apparently happened in our shot. Let's get in, let's take a look at what's happening. The first thing I wanna do is to see or show the mask slash mat. Now, that's a little bit of a hard edge, a little bit too hard for my liking there. Let's just put in a value of about, let's put in a value of about 30 for the feather. So we're not gonna go too crazy with the feather. I'm now going to turn off the mask or mat. And let's now make our adjustment. I'm gonna come up to the clone section and we're gonna adjust the shot on the x-axis to replace our boat. So let's do that. I'm just gonna grab the x value. We're just gonna drag it to the right. And what we've now basically done is remove that boat, okay? Now we've doubled up the clouds. And what's important to keep in mind is I can go over pretty far. Let's take it right to about there, just so we don't have the two same clouds sitting beside each other, okay? Now there's a, something else that's kind of going on that's a little bit bothersome because most people might think that we were done, but we're not. If you take a look at the horizon level, of our ocean, it doesn't line up. You'll notice the horizon takes a bit of a dip right here where we do our remove. So let's adjust that. We're gonna adjust the Y value. I'm gonna put up at about nine and maybe a little bit more. Let's go up to about 11. That's pretty darn close. Now, the other thing that's important to keep in mind is that I wanted to bring this section over here 
because it's a little bit on the lighter side, this over here is very dark. We need to get in and make some further adjustments that I'm going to show you in the next tutorial, okay? In our in part two of this tutorial. I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks now. And what I could do though, if I really wanted to, if I decided that, you know, maybe the mass goes up a little bit too high at any point, you can come back in, you can come down, you can launch Mocha again. And let's just click on our mask and we can get in and adjust these however we wanted to simply come up and close Mocha and it will make this update for us right away. Now I'm fairly happy with the way that this looks for our introduction lesson. I'm just going to give this a quick render and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Now if we wanted to, what we could do is we could do another remove effect up here to bring the sky down to sort of cover this over. But like I said, I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. Because in most cases, what's going to happen is, is that once our render is done here, I'm just going to jump back to the beginning of the timeline by stepping out of effects mode here. I'm going to hit play. And that's pretty darn locked in there. To be honest, nobody would even be able to tell that you replaced the sky there if you didn't tell them. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to take this a little bit further. Like I said, I can make a few more adjustments to this to get this super precise if I wanted to. But what I now want to do is to show you how this effect really shines and how you can really start to integrate things and really make them blend in. Let's take our next shot here, our swimming pool shot. Now what I'm going to do in this shot is we're going to remove the no diving allowed sign from the door. Maybe that, you know, we'll just assume for argument's sake, maybe this said something else. Maybe it had the hours of the pool and we didn't want to define that. We wanted to get rid of that sign for whatever reason. Now we're going to use the exact same technique. Let's come into the effects editor. Let's come to the remover effect. Okay. And in this case, we're actually going to track that sign because I think that's actually a very good, a good element to track. Now we are already in full quality. Let's make sure that we are using our clone shape tool. Let's make sure that the pixel chooser is turned on and we're going to launch Mocha. Now again, you'll see that the technique works the same no matter what type of shot you are using. I'm holding Z down on the keyboard to zoom in on our sign. And what I want to make sure of here is that in our first initial track, we're going to track the sign. So we're going to put our points right dead in the four corners of this sign, just like such. Okay. And again, much like I'd done before, 40%. Okay. We're not going to adjust shear. And I'm just going to track this. Let's actually zoom back so we can see our track a little bit better while we're going. Now, if you want to pan inside of Mocha, you're going to hold the X key on the keyboard. So X to pan, Z to zoom. Okay. And let's do it. Let's track. Okay. Now, again, you're going to see that this track is pretty darn locked on. First pass, I don't really need to make any adjustments to this or anything like that. But when it's done, what I'll do is I'll call up the planar surface again, and we can take a quick look just to make sure that everything is the way that it needs to be. And now that it's done, let's zoom in again. We'll just pan over here with the X key on the keyboard. Let's call up our planar surface. Just come back to the beginning here. We're going to hit play. And there you go. You're not going to get you're not going to get much of a better track than that. Literally first pass done. Okay. Now again, much like we had done before, we're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing that we need to make sure of, and I'm just going to turn our planar surface off here. Let's just zoom in. Is that I'm going to want to make sure that I extend a little bit past the sign so that when we do our feather everything is going to be covered up. Okay, so let's do that again, much like we did before, track reference. Okay, let's turn that layer off. Let's actually create our mask. Here we go from about, I think here is good. Now, the great thing with this fence is that we have the planks running straight down, which is the perfect place to divide up our shot. Now over here, everything kind of looks the same. So we can sort of come to wherever. Maybe I'll just come to about there. We'll just sort of get ourselves aligned right there. We'll just cut right across and I think that's pretty darn good. Okay. That's looking good. Now again, much like we did before, we're just going to call this mask or mat. We're going to make sure that it is linked to the track reference layer. And as soon as it is, we are of course again locked in just like that. Very nice. Okay. Now something I should also point out is that I did the the adjustment to the mat before. I actually linked it to the layer, but you can really do that process at any point. So for example, if I looked at this and I said, you know what, this isn't exactly where I need it to be. What I need to do is I just need to take just this one point and bring it over a little bit here. Okay. Let's just check what the bottom's doing here. The bottom's pretty good. Okay. You'll notice a keyframe has been added at the beginning, that green dot. I can come all the way down to the end and check this. And if it's moved slightly, we can adjust this. Now remember, this is being adjusted to the mask 
independently of the track. So this is how you can get this extra level of precision inside of Mocha for BCC. So again, much like we did before, let's close Mocha BCC. We're going to say save. Again, nothing is going to readily happen. Let's just zoom in on that part of the fence here. Okay. I'm holding Command and Option, Control and Alt to get the pan tool here so we can pan over. And now, instead of adjusting things on the X axis first, we're going to adjust things on the Y axis, just like this. Bring everything up. And you'll see that's looking pretty good. I need a little bit of a feather going on here. So let's just come back down. I'm going to set the feather super low, something like about three, I think. That's pretty good. Now, we have a bit of a problem. Okay, now this was a bit of a problem that we had in the first part of this tutorial. And I wanted to save this for here to show you how this works. You know, you always want to end with a bang. So this is how I want to do this here. You'll notice that the color tone of the fence where we did our mask is not the same as the lower part of the fence. You'll notice that it looks noticeably different. Basically what this is what basically what this part of the fence is is the bottom part down here where it gets even darker. Now you'll see that the color changes. Now it blends in perfectly at the top, not so much at the bottom. And to be honest, you know, we could just be like, "Oh, you know, that's fine. Nobody's ever going to notice it back there, so don't worry about it." Ah, but I do worry about it because I'm all about precision. So let's navigate over here again using the pan tool to our area of the fence that we just adjusted. I'm going to come back up to the top to the clone section. I'm going to bypass the offset, the scale, the opacity all the way down to the bottom to the brightness parameter. Let's just adjust this. I'm just going to drag it just to kind of get it close, which would be about there, I think. Now, again, I'm sort of zoomed way in, so I don't really have a good point of reference, but that's looking pretty darn close a lot closer than it was before. Now, let's actually put that back. I'm gonna, it's at 7.5. I'm going to put it back at zero. There's what it was before. Here's what it is now. You'll see a huge, huge, huge difference and a very easy way inside of the effect to get in and adjust things, adjust that brightness a little bit so that no matter what you're cloning and moving, it's always going to look like the element that it's being placed over top of. Now, I'm just going to step out of effects mode. We're going to give this effect a quick render, and we'll take a look at how the end result looks. Let's jump back to the beginning and hit play. And you know what? You would not be able to tell that there was a sign there before. Our track is perfect. Everything looks great. And this shot is good to go. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi host licenses, full or upgrades again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.